Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be doing a bit of a roundup of all of the DNA tests that I've done. So things like your ancestry and um, my heritage and things like that, the kits that I've done and also the websites that I've uploaded my DNA to. And I just thought I'd do a bit of a comparison and see what different sites offer and maybe it'll help you in choosing which ones that you want to try yourself. Before I get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because it will inform you of all of my future uploads. Let's get into it now. Uh, so the first one that I'd like to talk about is Ancestry DNA because that is probably the biggest and most well known of all of the kits that you can get. Um, my experience with Ancestry was pretty good. When I ordered the kit, it came pretty fast. Their price was reasonable. It wasn't overly expensive, I suppose. I feel like sometimes people give Ancestry a bit of a hard time, but it's probably just because they're the biggest and, you know, it's always easiest to knock the biggest one. <laughs> um, the things that I liked about Ancestry DNA is the, um, just the ease of the process, like ordering the kit easy, returning it, they give you the little satchel. It's really... A very straightforward process. Their um, breakdowns are very user friendly so you get your ethnicity estimate and your matches and I find their website very easy to use um, especially for beginners. So if you're a beginner and you haven't really done any other DNA tests I would sort of suggest Ancestry be the one that you first do. Some of the downsides to Ancestry I think are that they don't do um, chromosome matching like um like they won't show you a chromosome browser so if you are wanting to do sort of DNA painter or comparing your chromosomes more specifically, Ancestry is not going to help with that. But obviously that's more of an advanced thing. Another downside to Ancestry is that you can't upload raw data from a different um, provider. So for example, if you did a test with MyHeritage, you couldn't upload that data to Ancestry, but you can upload your Ancestry data to MyHeritage, for example. So. That's one reason that I would suggest that if this is your first one and you're kind of a beginner, go with Ancestry first because you can always upload your DNA to other sites, but you can't do it the other way around. I hope that makes sense. Um, one of the things I really like about Ancestry is actually their um, relative matching, like relative sort of finder or whatever you call it. Um, I feel like I got a lot of matches on Ancestry and they were useful kind of good matches in the sense that when I contacted people I had much more success in sort of collaborating and sharing our trees and things like that because the trees are so easy to to share and to navigate and I had more responses like maybe people on Ancestry are just generally more responsive I'm not sure that was just maybe my experience but I find their actual sort of matching really helpful also I find their ethnicity estimates pretty good they have quite a lot of regions um, I know that their recent sort of update was a bit weird with all the Scotland stuff, so I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think overall it's pretty good. Um, okay, next I think I'm just going to move on and then I'll just chit chat as I go. Um, so the next one I'll talk about is My Heritage. My Heritage was also um, a really good sort of user friendly um, option when I first uploaded my DNA in the sense that they have a cool little video when um, you get your ethnicity estimate when you first get it and you can watch the video. Actually I'll link my videos above um, so you can have a look but um, it's pretty cool I liked that. Um, and you do get matches, you get sort of relative matches and things like that, but I had a lot less um, luck with my heritage in the sense of actually making those connections. I made a whole video ranting about it, so I'll link that as well. Um, I don't know whether it's just that the people who choose to do the my heritage test are less committed, maybe they're less into genealogy and they're just more curious about their ethnicity or something. So I can't really explain like why, but I had far less luck. I don't think I had any matches that helped me sort of progress on my family tree or even that I helped them or anything like that. There was just no one interested. <laughs> my heritage is good in the sense that you can put your family tree up on there and they do have the fantastic um, uh, photo upload sort of things like your anti-blur and your... Um, colorize sort of tool which are amazing so my heritage website in general does offer some really great sort of features but I will say the downside with them I've found is their 
really aggressive marketing. So the amount of times that they've called me and tried to get me to sign up to a subscription or um, and weirdly I get those calls often after logging in. So if I haven't logged in for ages and then I log in and have a look at something like the next day or within a few hours or something, I've got a phone call from them um, trying to get me to sign up to something. So even though, you know, I know they've got to make their money, but I don't like um, sort of more aggressive sales techniques. I prefer, you know, if I want to, if I want to subscribe, I'm going to just do it myself. It's not going to happen because you're calling me and pestering me about it. <laughs> Okay, moving on to Living DNA. Living DNA was quite different to those first two in the sense that um, they're more they're more focused on sort of the sub regions. So, so with mine, I think I got a hundred percent sort of British Isles or whatever it was called, and that's fine. But that in itself wouldn't be particularly interesting. Like. Duh. <laughs> um, but what they offer is that whole sort of sub-region thing so I can see the particular areas in England or Scotland or wherever that my ancestors came from and that breakdown I haven't seen anything that detailed in any other website so if you're looking for a more sort of sub-region breakdown if you know that your ancestors are for example British but you want to know what areas of Britain that they came from this is the one for you. Look at Living DNA. Their price was pretty competitive. I think they might have actually been cheaper than the others. Um, and I found the experience pretty easy. The mailing and everything like that. No problems. Also, it's not just for British. I believe that they now have the African um, subregions as well. So they may have other ones too. But as far as I know, it's just um, British Isles and Africa. But they're probably working on other ones, I imagine. But yeah, the whole subregion breakdown is fascinating and yeah, if you want a more detailed kind of look into your um, ancestry, eth your ethnicity anyway, that's really useful. Um, the matching, the relative matching, they didn't really used to have that or if they did, I didn't used to have, like it, it wasn't, maybe they were just testing it or something, but I didn't use it for that. It just didn't really seem to have any relative matches, but recently they do seem to have um, invested in that and some matches are coming up but I think there's something a bit strange with it I made a video about it it was weird because I was matching with some people on living DNA um, quite closely like large Centre Morgan kind of matches and then when I would look at the same person in Ancestry we wouldn't be matched at all so I don't know what was going on there I can't explain how that's possible um, I don't know if there's something wonky with their system or is it Ancestry? <laughs> I tend to think it's Living DNA because um, there were just so many of those that they looked close and they just weren't. And when we compared trees, we just couldn't figure anything out. Also, I had a similar experience to my heritage in that a lot of people on there just didn't seem particularly interested in um, sharing. <laughs> maybe they weren't interested in genealogy, maybe they were just more interested in their ethnicity. But once again, it's kind of a letdown when you contact somebody to try to collaborate and they're not really into it. <laughs> Another good thing about Living DNA is that they um, show the mitochondrial DNA. So they gave me my haplogroup, even though it didn't go into a whole lot of detail. It does have that haplogroup there. So it's something extra that those kits give you that wasn't available on Ancestry or MyHeritage. So um, yeah, if you're interested in your mtDNA or your yDNA, then consider living DNA just for the basics there. Okay, the last kit that I tried was the family tree DNA kit and I got the um, mitochondrial DNA kind of add-on package and I found that one really interesting. I love their website, it's very, um, it's much more in depth though. If you're totally a beginner and you just wanna sort of try some stuff out, I wouldn't suggest that you rush into family tree DNA. It's probably better to start with ancestry DNA, but if you're right into your genealogy and your genetic genealogy specifically, then family tree and DNA is where it's at. It's the bomb. <laughs> uh, so family tree DNA offers you know your ethnicity kind of thing and you've also got ancient origins on there which is interesting they have um they have relative matching and they have chromosome browsing which is really fantastic some of the others don't offer that uh what else they do allow you to upload a family tree and they also have sort of little extras like those sort of health 
I think they call them like factoids or something. So you can um, pay a little bit of extra money if you want some of those as well. Uh, what else? So they also, I think I mentioned that they do the mitochondrial DNA. I did that. And Y DNA if you're a male. So uh, I did the upgraded kind of mitochondrial package and I got so much information from it. Plus extra matches like people matching my MT DNA. And yeah, um, little like videos and maps and things. So they really provide a lot. They do cost a little bit more, but it is sort of... It's worth the investment if that's what you're interested in. Uh, the last of the commercial ones that I know of, I didn't actually take. It was the 23andMe one. I was fully intending to do that um, back when I started doing all these tests for comparisons, but it was so expensive. So I don't think 23andMe is necessarily that expensive in other countries, maybe if you're in America or something like that. But in Australia, the shipping and the return sort of thing, it's just a nightmare. I couldn't do it. So, <laughs> so I didn't bother doing that one just purely because of the cost. Uh, so I won't be able to compare that one, sorry. All right, um, so those were all of the kits that I did. And like I said, they all kind of have their strengths and weaknesses. So it sort of depends on what you're looking for out of your testing. But after that, um, I just wanted to chat about a few websites that you can use with that DNA. So once you've already taken a test with one of those companies, you can then upload your data to other websites that will give you new kind of calculations and, you know, extra info. So like I said, Ancestry, I think is the only one that you can't upload raw data to, but you can upload it to all of those other providers or you can upload it to other sort of external websites. So the first one that I would obviously suggest is GEDmatch. GEDmatch is really interesting, it's free, and if you're concerned about the privacy thing, you can opt in or opt out of the law enforcement search, though personally, I will always advocate opting in because they've solved so many crimes and cold cases and missing people and stuff, like, I'm all for that. Uh, so also Jed match the reason you might do it you will get a list of people who match you and it'll have the little chromosome segments which you can if you want then take those to DNA painter which is another external website so from Jed match to DNA painter you can have a look at sort of um, your chromosome matches uh, you'll also just get the contact details of everyone who you match with sort of an email address or whatever if you want to contact them to figure out your connection uh, and and the fun sort of bit about dead match in my opinion is the calculators the ethnicity calculators so I will link a video above where I explain how to use those calculators but basically what they do is just take your DNA and do ethnicity estimates so you know every website's gonna have slightly different estimates for you because they use different reference populations when they're calculating things so it's not an exact science you should know that and that's why it's really good to run your DNA against different calculators to see like if you can build a kind of a consensus on you know rather than just thinking okay this one this is accurate and that one isn't have a look at a range of them and see what comes up and look for patterns Okay, so once you've looked at GEDmatch, there are two more sort of fun websites that I would highly recommend doing with your DNA. So one is My True Ancestry. You can upload your DNA there and it will give you your ancient estimates. So it's quite detailed. Um, it'll give you ethnicity estimates of your ancient ancestry and it will give you um, sort of maps and timelines of where your sort of ancient ancestors were. They take like samples of burials, so like, you know, Vikings or, you know, um, Aztecs or whoever you can think of, ancient sort of burials, and they run your DNA against them. So you can see how well you match to people in the ancient world, which is so fascinating. So no, it's not gonna really help you with your family tree, like your recent kind of genealogy, but it is really interesting if you're interested in ancient history or your ancient sort of origins. Um, they are also free to start with. The basic sort of plan, you can upload your data, what do you call it, your raw DNA, and you can have a look at quite a bit of info first. And then if you decide that you want more kind of info, you can go with their subscription plans. They're pretty reasonable and they often have sales, so it's also worth checking out, um, just keeping an eye on it. And the last one I'll talk about is your DNA portal. So you can also upload your 
uh, raw data there and it gives you all sorts of crazy kind of information. So it's looked at all different scientific studies and it'll tell you things like what your predicted hair color is or you know how much Neanderthal DNA you have in you or and like when I talk about hair color it's like well you can see your hair color but it actually shows your genetic predisposition to your hair color or it'll tell you your different sort of likelihoods of getting different diseases or being a gambler or you know just different traits so it runs your um, DNA against the um, studies that have shown you know dna to be linked to certain traits so it's fascinating it's also free there are little upgrades in there too if you want extra information but you can start out with the free one if you're just curious um it's a really interesting website as well so i would highly recommend checking that one out okay i feel like um i've been talking a lot so hopefully that all made sense um do let me know if there's any other websites that you think are interesting and are worth uploading my dna to and trying out I'm always on the lookout for new stuff to try, so do let me know in the comments below and let me know if you've had experiences with some of these companies and what your thoughts were. I hope this has been helpful and um, yeah, that's about it for this video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye guys!